In Hawkins Falls, people say, Some men can promote anything. They can turn hot air into cold cash. Hawkins Falls, a television novel that tells the story of life in small town USA. Hawkins Falls is brought to you today by NBC. That's right. No, I haven't. Well, I'm sorry I can't add to the statement. Now, look, I don't want to appear abrupt, but this long-distance call is running up quite a bill for you, and I can't add to the statement. Right. Goodbye. Sorry to keep you waiting like this, Judge. Uh, perfectly all right. You seem to have your hands full. Newspapers have been calling, magazines. I never realized what a simple statement in our local paper could provoke. Floyd, I'm delighted that you did make that statement. I'm sorry if it's causing you a headache, but it was something that had to be said. I'd be happier if none of this had ever happened. I often wonder what people did in the good old days before news traveled so fast. Maybe they were a lot happier, Judge. Who knows? Well, at least you've given some people in town something to think about. I wonder. I had a patient in here a while ago who was angry at me. Said I had no right to say that Andy Anderson isn't gifted with second sight. Uh, you'll always come across certain people who like romantic ideas better than practical ones. Well, you want to step inside? No, 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 thanks. I just stopped by to say that I'm in agreement with you. Thank you, Judge. How's the back? Oh, not bad at all. Matter of fact, it feels perfectly normal again. Well, you might try leaving the girdle off one day a week until you find you don't need it. I've gotten used to it. I like what it does to my figure. Anyhow, if I keep on wearing it, not at all, but I thought you were against the idea. I was, but I've changed. That's something you might bear in mind during all this to do, boy. I change, others change, everyone changes. Funny, it never gets as bad as it seems. I'll remember that, Judge. I'd rather you didn't. It wasn't worthy of me. I hate platitudes. Hello. Oh, that's the worst of it. When charming young ladies start holding doors for you, that's the worst of it. Goodbye, Judge. Bye. Hello, Myra Hendricks, remember? Yes, of course. How are you, Miss Hendricks? Me, I'm fine. I was a little unhappy about being sent here on that phony story. But thanks to you, a better one developed. Well, I hope I don't sound rude, Miss Hendricks, but I have nothing further to say. Oh, I'm not going to question you on that Andy Anderson thing. You made it quite clear what you think of his being psychic. Good. I thought you might have come here for further information. I've been deluged with phone calls from the press. And... Well, here it goes again. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Corey's office. Sorry, no statement. You have to be a little tough with them, Doctor. <laughs> Somehow I never thought about doing that. Doctor, I was sent here by my press service to get more dope on that story Mitch Frederick sent out. I knew it was phony from the start, but I wasn't sent here to get an expose. I was simply told to get more information from Mr. Frederick. Well, you've given me the best story of all. I don't see how. I understand that you and Fredericks have always been the closest of friends. People around town tell me that you two have always had the highest regard and respect for each other. Now you make a statement in his paper that practically accuses him of trying to promote a fraud. Oh, I don't remember saying that. Well, that's what it amounts to, though. Look, this is the angle I'd like to cover. It's human. I can't say anything further on the matter. Exactly what he said when I went to the newspaper office. Good, then the matter is closed. You think so? I feel there's a lot here. For instance, Mr. Frederick's fiance works as your receptionist. Where is she? She works here only in the morning. Then she was at work this morning as usual. No. Did she quit her job because of what happened? I don't know. I haven't talked to her. Well, does she usually do that, not show up for work, I mean? Now, look, Miss Hendricks, I realize you're trying to do your job, and I'm not being of much help to you. But I really would rather not talk about it anymore. In my profession, you're not supposed to let anything stop you. But I can tell when a man means what he says, and obviously you do. Okay, Doctor. No more. Thank you. Mr. Fredericks has an interesting background for an editor. I wouldn't know. Don't you, Doctor? You agreed not to discuss it anymore. Now, look, I agreed not to ask you about this little difference you two are having, but right now I'm talking about something entirely different. 
According to what I've been able to get, Mr. Fredericks came to this town a few years ago under unusual circumstances. I can't see what that has to do with the present. Look, Doctor, I'm a writer. Anything I write has to have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. The beginning in this case fascinates me. Whatever Mitch Fredericks has done in this Anderson matter, he's done in the view of helping Hawkins Falls and the fair. I've never disputed that. I'm not talking about that beginning. I'm talking about what brought him here in the first place. Now, that has nothing to do with the matter at hand. Pardon me for contradicting you, Doctor, but I have to be the best judge of that. Now, listen to me, young lady. I didn't get into this disagreement with Mitch in order to give in interesting uh, articles for the newspapers. You know, the way you're jumping to his defense makes it look as if you don't want me to dig up his past. What right have you to dig up anyone's past? This is something I feel very strongly about, and I'll fight you on it, Miss Hendricks. Looks as if I've had paid dirt. You can take the best dirt in the world, pour water on it, and get mud. Now, don't start slinging mud, Miss Hendricks. I warn you. We'll talk again when you're in a little better mood. Bye now. One nine five two, please. Hello, Artie. Is Mitch there? I see. I'll have him call me as soon as you hear from him. It's Dr. Corey. Right. Luna, this is disgraceful. Now, just look what the doctor put in the paper about me. He merely expressed his opinion about your psychic powers. He said the same thing directly to you before he made a statement to the paper. Trying to make me a laughing stock. Nice way to treat me after that big donation I made to the fair. Andy, everybody appreciates your donation, but... Well, Millie, you tell him. Andy... No, I don't want to hear about it. It's the same thing you started to tell me the other day. He won't listen. I've tried a dozen times. Andy, this whole thing about your being psychic was Mitch's idea to get publicity for the fair. Millie, didn't I tell you a few things about yourself that you said I couldn't possibly have known? But Mitch asked me to do it. He wanted you to think you were psychic to back up this whole promotion. You told me a number of things that had absolutely no basis in fact. And I agreed with you because Mitch asked me to. And what about the horse I told May Shipley to play? Yes, she showed me some names and I picked one on intuition. My psychic powers told me to do it. It wasn't psychic powers. The horse won, didn't it? Andy, people have won on horses before with luck. It wasn't luck at all. Something told me to do that in advance. And how about the other day, when the doctor asked me a question? Well, that was just a good guess. Oh, I know. I, I've never been in that office before in my life, and yet I knew exactly where that medical bag was. Well, Floyd thought quickly, and he happened to ask you a very simple question. Millie, you've been in the doctor's office, haven't you? Hundreds of times. All right, where does he keep his medical bag? Well, I never noticed. There you are, Lona. She's been there hundreds of times, and still she doesn't know. Oh, no. I've got it all right, all right. And I'm sorry to say, Lona, but I'm going to have to publicly make a fool out of your husband. Andy, I'll demonstrate to one and all that I do know things in advance. Andy, I feel partly responsible for this because I was in on it in the beginning. But can't you see that Dr. Corey is trying to save you from some disappointment? Be reasonable, Andy. Would you like to know who's going to win the World Series this year? Chicago. Oh, now, Take really? Take a minute and think about this, Andy. It came to me as I was lying on my bed last night. Chicago will win in six games. Be practical, Andy. You've lived all your life so far with no idea of being psychic. Suddenly, Mitch tells you that you are. Well, you make a couple of guesses that happen to turn out right, and now you're convinced that you have exceptional power. Oh, I have them all right, Lona. And that's what I intend to prove publicly. What are you going to do? You'll see the announcement in tomorrow's paper. I'm going to make a prediction to Mitch and back it up with my life. Your what? what? That ought to prove that I totally believe in myself. Now, wait a minute, Andy. Just what do you intend to do? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to tell you. Have you and the doctor make arrangements to cross me up. Oh, the stakes are a little too high at this time, and I don't intend to lose. You said you're going to back this up with your life. Andy, that's an unthinkable gamble. Well, not at all. It's a certain thing. And I know of no better way to prove it either. Oh, there's lots of people like the doctor are going to have red faces 
after I do this. Make no mistake about that. But you will let Mitch know what you're going to do. Oh, certainly. I need him to print it in the paper before it actually happens. Oh, Mitch believes in me. He'll go the limit. But I want it made perfectly clear that I did give the doctor a chance to retract his statement. Andy, why don't you stop in his office and talk this over with him? No, oh, I'm presently mad at the doctor. You can give him the message for me. Yes, sir. Chicago will win the World Series in six games. Just remember, I told you this. I'll try and remember until next October. You'll see. I know exactly what I'm talking about. He's just talking about this demonstration or whatever he has on his mind. Well, I certainly hope so. At least if he tells Mitch about it, he'll try to stop. Funny, isn't it? I don't mean it's anything to laugh about. Can't say that when a man is in Andy's position. No, I know what you mean. But a person really can talk himself into thinking anything. I've heard the theory before, but I've never seen it in practice. It's a pity Andy couldn't talk himself into something constructive. Kitchens in Hawkins Falls are by General Electric. In Hawkins Falls, Lona Corey is Bernardine Flynn. Dr. Corey is Maurice Copeland. Millie Flagel is Roz Tui. Judge Sharp is Philip Lord. Andy Anderson is Arthur Peterson. And Myra Hendricks is Myra Marks. Your announcer is Wed Howard. We take you to Hawkins Falls each day, Monday through Friday at the same time. Come with us tomorrow, won't you? Hawkins Falls is created by Doug Johnson, written by Bill Barrett, directed by Frank Pacelli, and produced by Ben Putt.